Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Pacific Partnerships in Education here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. Pacific Partnerships in Education is all, just as its name says, about the different kinds of partnerships, the different people who are partnering, the groups that are partnering, the collaborations, the alliances, all to the betterment of education across the Pacific. And we're stretching our bounds today. We're, we're gonna look at a program that, that involves not just the South Pacific here that we usually look at, but it goes all the way around the other side of the globe and looks at Greenland. And here I have Dan Lin, my colleague here at Prel. Uh, welcome, Dan. Thank you, thanks for having me again. Uh, Dan Lin's an amazing photographer, uh, video director now. Uh, you may, you may have seen his uh, earlier film, Anointed. It's made, made quite the splash. Uh, so uh, tell us uh, just a little bit here, Dan, about uh, what, what, what the genesis of this project was. Sure. Um, this project, uh, we called it Project Rise, um, for obvious reasons. That you'll, um, but uh, the genesis was, how can we show the connections between um, communities that are beyond the Pacific to the Pacific itself. Um, and it actually came during the filming of my last, of the last film, Anointed, where we were, Kathy and I were spitballing ideas like, um, what is, uh, how can we do something bigger and better than, than the previous film? Um, and what would that platform be? And she had mentioned that a conversation with her and uh, Bill McKibben, who's the founder of 350.org, a climate change um, organization, campaigning organization, she said that he wanted to see a, a, a person from an atoll island on, um, on a glacier, on an ice sheet, um, to, to see the source of the rising seas for themselves. Ah, um, right. So much of the sea level rise is the, the melting of, gla of above ground glaciers. Right. 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 Uh, so this led, led to this odd collaboration with the Pacific Islands, the Marshall Islands, more specifically where Kathy comes from, mm -hmm. and Greenland. Right, um, and it's you know in a, in a lot of ways they're so disparate. We there's right. not a lot of people from either of the communities that have been to each other's places, um, but in a, in a much in another sense um, they are hugely interconnected. Um, they're both actually very similar in population size, or mm -hmm. roughly fifty five thousand people. Mm -hmm. um, yet one island, Greenland, is also an island, the right. biggest island in the world. It has twelve thousand times more land mass than the Marshall Islands, roughly. <laughs> And so, you know, same same amount of people, um, huge different disparities in land mass, but like a similar story, right? Rapidly changing climate and environment. Right. And again, small communities quite isolated from one another, often. Yes. Uh, by, yeah. By exactly. Large distances. So yeah, yeah surprising similarities. There are very there are no roads that connect most of these right. cities in, in in Greenland. So. Uh, or these towns. Um, just, just as there are no roads across Exactly, them. <laughs> yeah. There's the only the ocean right. pathway, so right. the only way to get there is either through air or by um, by boat or or by sled dog, which right. is a common mode of transportation. Right. But they are, like the marshals, they're being impacted by the changing climate in sort of a different way. I mean, their oceans yeah. are rising, but that's not the most immediate concern, maybe, that the whole landforms are changing under them, right? Right, yeah. right, right. I mean, the, the melt of the, of the Greenlandic ice sheet is, is um, incredibly rapid at, at a rate that I think surprises even scientists. Um, but people, you know, they, they feel it. Um, their lifestyles are changing. Um, the, the hab you know, the, they need to hunt in the winter, t in the summertime to feed themselves in the winter. And, and the, and that process is changing as well. You know, the animal herds are thinning out. Um, they're harder to get to. Um, and then the, the summer months and the winter months are changing as well. So, yeah. interesting. Well, let's just go ahead and jump into it then, if we if we might. Yeah. And look at uh, rise. Yeah. Sister of ice and snow, I'm coming to you from the land of my ancestors from atolls, sunken volcanoes, undersea descent of sleeping giants. Sister of ocean and sand, I welcome you to the land of my ancestors, to the land where they sacrificed their lives to make mine possible, to the land of survivors. I'm coming to you from the land my ancestors chose, Ailankainan. Marshall Islands, a country more sea than land. 
I welcome you to Kadashit Nunai, Greenland, the biggest island on earth. With me I bring these shells that I picked from the shores of Beginni Atoll and Runit Dome. In my hand I hold these rocks picked from the shores of Nuuk, the foundation of the land I call my home. With these shells I bring with me a story of long ago. Two sisters frozen in time on the island of Wuyai. One magically turned to stone. The other who chose that life to be rooted by her sister's side. To this day, the two sisters can be seen by the edge of the reef, a lesson in permanence. With these rocks I bring a story told countless times, a story about Sisuma Amna, mother of the sea, who lives in a cave at the bottom of the ocean. This is a story about the guardian of the sea. She sees the greed in our hearts, the disrespect in our eyes. Every whale, every stream, every iceberg are her children. When we disrespect them, she gives us what we deserve, a lesson in respect. Do we deserve the melting ice, the hungry polar bears coming to our islands, or the colossal icebergs hitting these waters with rage? From one island to another, I ask for solutions. From one island to another, I ask for your problems. Let me show you the tide, coming for us faster than we'd like to admit. Let me show you airports underwater, bulldozed reefs, blasted sands, and plans to build new atolls, forcing land from an ancient rising sea, forcing us to imagine turning ourselves to stone. Can you see a glacier's grown the weight of the world's heat? I wait for you, here on the land of my ancestors. Heart heavy with a continuous thirst for solutions. As I watch this land change while the world remains silent. Sister of ice and snow, I come to you now in grief. Mourning landscapes that are always forced to change. First, through wars inflicted on us. Then, through nuclear waste dumped in our waters. On our ice. And now, this. Sister of ocean and sand, I offer you these rocks, the foundation of my home. May the same unshakable foundation connect us, make us stronger than these colonizing monsters that still to this day devour our lives. The very same beasts that now decide who should live, who should die. Sister of ice and snow, I offer you these shells and the story of the two sisters as testament, as declaration that despite what we are told, we will not leave. We will choose stone. We will choose to be rooted to this reef forever. From these islands, we ask for solutions. From these islands, we ask, we demand that the world see beyond ACs, SUVs, their pre-packaged convenience, their oil slick dreams. Beyond the belief that tomorrow will never happen, that this is merely an inconvenient truth. Let me bring my home to yours. Let's watch as Miami, New York, Shanghai, Amsterdam, London, Rio de Janeiro, and Osaka try to breathe underwater. You think you have decades before your home fall beneath tides? We have years, we have months before you sacrifice us again, before you watch from your TV screens and computer screens to see if we will still be breathing while you do nothing. My sister, I offer you these rocks as a reminder that our lives matter more than their power. That life in all forms demands the same respect we all give to money. That these issues will affect each and every one of us. None of us is immune. And that each and every one of us has to decide if we will rise. Well. That was uh, amazing, amazing. Thank, thank you for doing that, Dan. Uh, I had seen rough cut of that. Of course, you showed, showed a rough cut uh, a while ago, but it's, it's really nice to see that all finally, finally polished now.
Yeah, thank you. Uh, simply amazing to watch uh, what they've done to realize that 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 similarity of the, the, the threat, basically, that hangs over both of these groups, even though it's, as you say, they're really on opposite sides of the planet. They're mm -hmm. very different areas. Uh, Greenland's high, cold, Marshalls are low and, uh, and tropical, but, but climate change is really heavily impacting bo both of these extremes on our planet more yeah. than the temperate zones. But uh, it, that gives you pause, right? It, it sort of says if it's, it's affecting the Arctic and affecting the tropics, can the temperate zones be far behind, right? right. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's, uh, and so just a quick, uh, out of curiosity, how, how did you find this poet in Greenland who, who co-wrote this poem with, with Kathy? We know Kathy, of course, has immense talent and, and is a brilliant, brilliant poet. Mm -hmm. um, well, Kathy, when we were committed to doing this, um, Kathy and myself, uh, we both feel like, you know, if we're you're gonna go into a, a place outside of our comfort zone, our region, um, it's best to, you know, if we're gonna speak about a place, it's best to have somebody um, from that place um, to, to speak about that it as well. And so mm -hmm. I think it became less of a, of Kathy's perspective so much as like a, a dialogue between two people. Right. So um, we found Akka, her name's Akka, uh, Niviana, and she um, she is an you know an indigenous Greenlandic um, activist, um, and she had done a little bit of poetry, um, but this was definitely a step up from what she had been used to. And we um, we asked around, and her name came up because she had given a really powerful and beautiful um, speech at the at a, at a climate summit in uh, Copenhagen a few years ago. And oh, so okay. we we saw the video. We're like, hey, we reached out. And she just so happened to be available. So it's oh, awesome. Wonderful, wonderful. And for me, like visually, as a director, it was awesome that they happened to be the same height too. So you know, <laughs> I had a lot of shots where we really wanted them to be standing next to each other. And if Aka turned up to be like six four, then <laughs> it would have been kind of awkward. So um, yeah, it was really perfect. Yeah, no, it does work out for, very nicely in the way that they're framed so often there in the in the film, back to back or face right. face or side right. by side. Yeah, it's just just uh, stunning. Uh, and the, the, the beautiful parallels that, that you get with uh, her in the water and her lying on the, on the yeah the water, that, that, yeah that, that, well the whole for me like you know artistically this this film is about parallels you know it's about parallelism showing that you know despite being two very different environments the storyline and the and the are, are actually very similar and and the communities they're in I mean the Greenlandic in, Inuit Inuk community is they're incredible I mean there's very similar to Islanders in the sense that in Pacific Islands and what we're used to is this there's just like you know it's a very family-oriented community they're very warm hospitable um, and they they just there's deep deep rooted legends and storylines um, that we kind of learn more about as we went through uh, so it was it was you know, oddly familiar being in that environment, even though we weren't really prepared for the weather. Um, it was just cold, and we, we hadn't really, we didn't have any, we didn't have the adequate clothing, so we would go there, and we'd end up buying clothes to keep layering up. But yeah, it was similar. That's, that's, uh, that's uh, yeah, it's amazing. It comes out very nicely, and you know, the, the, the beautiful, the visual parallels with the, the handful of stones, the, the handful of shells, and mm -hmm. getting passed back and forth, and the sort of, Sweeping vistas across the glaciers and sweeping vistas across the ocean. Yeah, very, very, very nicely done. Thank uh, you, thank you. And very powerful, uh, very, very moving uh, video too. So uh, we're going to dig in more deeply into sort of the whys and wherefores of this when we come back. Right now, we're going to take a, a brief break. Uh, Dan Lin is here, videographer extraordinaire, uh, and I'm your host, Ethan Allen. We'll be back with more of Pacific Partnerships and Education in one minute. Aloha, I'm Marcia Joyner inviting you to come visit with us on Cannabis Chronicles, a 10,000 year odyssey, where we explore and examine the plant that the muse has given us. And stay with us as we explore all of the facets of this planet on Wednesdays at noon. Please join us, aloha. Hello. My name is Stephanie Mock, and I'm one of three hosts of Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Food and Farmer series. 
our other hosts are Matt Johnson and Pamai Weigert, and we talk to those who are in the fields and behind the scenes of our local food system. We talk to farmers, chefs, restaurateurs, and more to learn more about what goes into sustainable agriculture here in Hawaii. We are on at Thursdays at 4 p.m., and we hope we'll see you next time. And you're back here on Pacific Partnerships in Education with me, your host, Ethan Allen, here on Think Tech Hawaii. With me today in the Think Tech studio is Dan Lin. Uh, we just watched Rise, that, that amazing six minute video that, that Dan just completed here, that really uh, tracks the, the, the sort of parallel challenges, parallel situations between the populations in the Marshall Islands and the populations in Greenland, which would seem to have almost nothing in common when you first think about it, and yet, as Dan points out, and as comes vividly clear through the, the, the video there, they have tremendous parallels, uh, both relatively isolated by their environment, uh, both quite remote, uh, both small communities isolated from one another, lots of intervening blank space, no roads, uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, and this was really driven by the, the issue of climate change and wanting to raise that awareness. And it sounds like you, and you were telling me during the break, you, you've shown this to, uh, you've had a, an opening of it, the uh, initial screening, and, and got some folks who are influencers, shall we say, to, yeah. to look at it and, and got good reactions from them. Yeah, yeah, well, we first screened it, um, I guess the debut screening was in San Francisco up at a, up during the Global Climate Action Summit, um, and there were, you know, quite a few people. My hero, Sylvia Earle, was in the room, and, you know, President Onote Tong, and um, a lot of people from the conservation space and the, and the tech space, and they were all, I think they were all in the room and appreciated to see uh, people outside of that world talking about these issues in a very um, genuine and, and, and uh, concerned way. I think mean, that's what... Yeah, that's, that's what strikes me out of it without about getting all techie and sciencey about it, you, you've really you set up a situation with that video where you're grabbing people's heartstrings. You're, you're making you're making them feel the the, the depth of the, the issue and, and the fact that it really is impacting the lives of individuals. Both these women clearly are, are passionate, care deeply about their communities, care deeply about what they're seeing happening to their communities. Yeah, yeah, and I think you know from the from the very first day of planning this out, we wanted to make a climate change film that didn't have the same kind of arc of most climate change films, which is, woe is us, you know, like, everything's doomed, here's some, here's major typhoons, images of people stranded, polar bears, we didn't really want this looming guilt um, that a lot of climate change uh, filmography ends up t touching on. Um, what I wanted to create was a, a film that shows um, two really uniquely beautiful places and people and a dialogue that touches on these themes without, like, I don't know, I just, it's, it's not as direct as in your face, like, do something about this. It's more about, like, um, making these subtle connections, you know, <laughs> melting ice um, and then, and then uh, a rising sea, right? Um, mm -hmm. And showing the, the streets in the Marshall Islands that are surrounded both sides by water. Um, and it, I think what we want is a, a people to watch it and view it um, as a beautiful work of art and then also have this like lesson learned by, by just engaging with it. Yeah, and, and I, think, I think you succeed uh, wonderfully with that. There, there is this, this very strong affective emotional component to it. Uh, it. It's a very deeply moving piece without, yeah, without sort of a lot of plot to it, as it were, <laughs> right? Yeah, and it, not a lot of science, either. I mean, we try to remove all the, you know, the facts and figures and, and all the kind of the, the, the longevity of, like, you know, like time and, and, and just, right. and like, the, yeah, we just wanted a, a piece about two people and from two places and, and the communities that they represent. Yeah, there's a real immediacy to it. Uh, these people talking about things that are clearly in their faces going on each day, impacting their lives. Right. And yet there is, I mean, there is a very sort of an unurgent message there, sort of saying we can't just sit and wait about this. Right. You know, that the sitting and waiting is not an option here. That's, right. That, that's just going to be more of the same and worse, right? Right. right. So there, there is a nice, 
I think, a very powerful motivational aspect to it, too, to, that says, hey, let's, let's get off our duffs and, and do right. something. Right, <laughs> right, right, which is like the big call to action is to actually do something um, without necessarily being as like doomsday-ish as some of the other films that have come out um, are. I think we try to avoid this huge looming guilt that comes with some, right. some climate change films, um, but also make it a pretty, very obvious that there needs to be action that's done. Yeah, and you, you do. It, it's nice you avoid that. There is, with uh, some of the Pacific Islanders who I've talked with, there's a, a very, an acceptance of sort of almost inevitability of like, yeah, it is what it is, and we're just, we're here, we're gonna suffer the consequences of this mm. too bad. And there is uh, that, you avoided that very nicely. You, you, you left a message that, you know, we need to be moving ahead. And, and I, I think, I mean, I think it's true. I think we have to hope that our scientists, our engineers, will see the urgency of this problem, will put, our governments will put time, energy, resources into the, the potential solutions and we can test them out and see what's gonna, right. what's gonna work. Yeah, I think you're, you're right on. I think there needs to be an element of hope or else, you know, if you if you throw in too much despair, people just kind of give up, right? And so I think, right. you know, there's a hope and there's an appreciation of the beauty that comes with people in, in places that often aren't really discussed on, at the at the global level. So, um, yeah, I think that, that that's what that was the intended consequence, uh, the intended outcome of this mm -hmm. film, um, and hopefully it. it have achieved that. Yeah, no, absolutely. You do. You strike some just incredible beauty in showing. I mean, the, the the shift back and forth from the tropical seas to the, to the ice sheets, back and forth, back yeah. and forth. That uh, sort of pointing out there's there's majestic, awesome, almost frightening beauty in, in both of them, right? Right. Uh, right. And and it's uh, you know we, we need to preserve them, uh, and, and we we must do something. So that's right. right. That's. Uh, so uh, let, let's uh, let's look ahead, if we might. Uh, sort of what what's next? You you did Anointed, that was a, a very powerful film, uh, looking Thank sort you. of backwards at, at the nuclear legacy in the in the islands, uh, and now you've done this. Uh, where 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 are you headed? <laughs> I mean, we're off to Nepal, but uh. yeah, I head up, I head up to Nepal uh, tomorrow actually, but um and and uh, trying to. You know, listen to the stories of the people in the in the highest villages in the world, and um, you know, with an amazing group of, of um, people that I think are very interested in being being servants to uh, disparate communities. Um, but you know, that's part of a bigger, longer-term project. Um, and then I have a few, like you know, we have a couple of film projects that are kind of cooking mm -hmm. in, in the pot. Um, can't talk more about it right now, okay. um, but, but I think we're excited to, to move forward with that. Um, it looks at uh, a little bit different, not, not so much poetry, but actually like um, uh, different forms of storytelling. Uh -huh. um, I, still, I still really enjoy the short form film making, so mm -hmm. I like film, uh, short films, and so it'll be in, in that arc. Um, but yeah, I mean, each, every time we do a project, there's so much like that we uncover as like, this is this is another angle that I want to tell a story and, you know, assembling the right team and getting people, um, and do, making sure that it's fresh, not like, you know, to, to do the same kind of story arc every time um, or the same kind of film. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice creative challenge for me. No, it, 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 it's lovely. It's, uh, I mean, there were some, some odd parallels to Anointed in that, just well, because Cappy, right. Cappy is there and doing poetry in right. both of them, but, mm -hmm. but some very wildly different aspects, too, so that, that, was, that yeah. was amazing. And, yeah, we're um, trying to level up every time, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure if you, if you go high in the mountains, you're going you're gonna to see some other, other things there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. And, and it's, you know, it's, it's really important, too. I think this whole issue of storytelling is a, is a great approach you know, my background is science, as you well know, and I'm a great believer in, hey, you know, the facts will out. If you give people, <laughs> tell, tell the right story in terms of the facts, people will see the, the logic and the reason, and, and mm. yet I know perfectly well that doesn't actually work. And, and this emotional grabbing, grabbing of the heartstrings, really, really pulling at people's uh, emotional connections with the, with the characters there is really a, a much more effective way, probably, to, to engender uh, 
the, the kind of involvement that we want, right? To, to well, get, get the people to start caring about it and, and realize they, they have to do something. I, I think there's, yeah, I think there's definitely a need for balance. I think you know, um, there's, you know, there's so much value and and um, like certainty with science and with data, and I think that there's always a place for that. But I think opening the doors th through an emotional connection is hugely valuable as well. And I think if you work together in those kind of partnerships, um, people can feel an emotional connection and then learn more about the scientific like kind of uh, foundation of, of these issues. Right. Now, now I, I would take issue with your, with your claim that there's certainty in science. Science is, is <laughs> full of uncertainty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so guess. The one thing you can be certain of, you know, right, right. is that True. you're not going to But uh, science does tend to avoid the empathetic, the affective, the emotional components of things, or downplays that as, as much as sort of is humanly possible. And, and you're putting that front and center here. And, with, and as you say, it makes for, I think, a very powerful uh, very engaging, very compelling story, which which is is absolutely wonderful. And um, you, so you, you you mentioned, I think one thing that was critical: your your team there that you worked with. Uh, mm -hmm. do, do you want to do a, a shout out to any organizations, particular people that that, uh, that, that, that was, I think. A, you know, sure. Yeah, um, I, I'm definitely grateful for 350.org, um, Bill, and, and the vision that he put together, just for supporting this idea um, and, and seeing it through all the way. Um, Aka and Kathy really work so well together. They're really a joy to work with. And then um, my producer Oz, who came with us on the trip, um, Jason Box, who's the sci glacial, glaciologist. Um, and um, and Alan Hubbard, who was a, another glaciologist. We just had like a really great family of people that brought in science and also brought in storytelling. Um, and then the, from the editing side, you know, putting all this together was Nick Stone um, and, and Rob Lau, who you know, kind of kind of really gelled all these disparate pieces and helped help me tell this story. Um, and then finally, just Prell, of course, you know, for giving me and Kathy the creative. Uh, liberties to to express ourselves in, in, in different ways um, and express these these issues in a more creative um, endeavor. Excellent. Well, it was wonderful. Uh, I'm glad we had a chance here to share it with our, our audiences. I, I think you've uh, yet achieved another uh, great example of, of a partnership in education here that's that's very powerful. It goes beyond the Pacific even. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to staying in touch with you and getting you back on again when you've got another project to share. Yeah, yeah, stay Thank tuned. Thank you so much, Dan Lin. Uh, it, it's been a pleasure. Uh, and look forward to hearing your further adventures. Thank you. And I hope you will join us uh, on our next episode of Pacific Partnerships in Education here on Think Tech Hawaii. Until then.